Well, folks, it's time for another Cash Cow build in Gran Turismo 7, and as promised last time, I mentioned I was going to do a build for my personal favourite car that I like to use at the moment, at least, to earn cash at Le Mans. I used to use the Veyron almost exclusively, not because it's necessarily the best. On all of these videos, I always get the comments about the Red Bull Junior and various other cars. Those are great. You know, I've done some tunes for those as well, but the purpose of all of these different tunes that I do is so that you can actually keep it varied, keep changing up the car so you don't get bored. That's what I personally like to do. Even when I find a car that I do love like this one, I still like to change it up every so often. The SLR just happens to be my favourite Mercedes anyway, so I love to use it. Now, as far as the upgrades, you don't really have to do too much to the car if you do want to use it. And of course, you may need to alter this in future because updates do tend to change the point level, so keep an eye on that. As far as the tyres, of course, you have to have your racing tyres. You could go for the intermediates. I know some people like to do that. You will need to pit in approximately the end of lap three each time. So end of lap three, end of lap, what, six, I guess, or end of lap five, end of lap six, thereabouts. So if you could line that up with the tyres, you might be able to go for intermediates and be even better in the rain. I tend to just fit hards and just stick to that and then turn the traction control on when I need to, but it's, you know, each to their own. I know some of you guys don't even have rain in the race that you'll see in a second. I had rain twice, really bad rain, and I always seem to get rain. It's funny how it works. As far as the suspension, though, you do want the fully customised setup. I would recommend 105 mil on ride height, so lower but not crazy low. 6 for anti-roll, 38 on the dampers for the compression side, then 44 for the rebound aspect of that. As far as the frequency goes, we've got 3.5, 2 degrees of camber, and just a little bit of tow, 0.10 in on the back, 0.10 out on the front, of course, for stability. As far as the diff, nothing too crazy, 10, 35, and 40. No NOS, of course, I have left the transmission standard. You have the same amount of gears as with the race one anyway, it's only a 5-speed on these older Mercs or older, early 2000s, older. But uh, these cars only needed five gears because they got so much torque, of course, much like the SL65 even. So in the game, you really don't need to fit the race one anyway. It just raises the points for no good reason. As far as the power restrictor, you don't actually need it. You do want ballast, though, because you've got two options, really, when you go into one of these events. You could go to drop the weight, but then sacrifice some power, or you could do what I do, which is, given that Lamar is a high-speed track, I tend to go more for power and then sacrifice some weight. So in this case, I've got 200 kilos of ballast. We've put that 10% toward the rear. It's still a 50-50 split, though, and that allows us to have, as you can see, the fully customized ECU at up around 92%, so a 660 horsepower car. Downforce, of course, you can't adjust, at least without doing any, you know, wings or anything, which I've opted not to do. And then as far as these parts, all I've done is the racing discs, the racing pads, and then, of course, you can see the parts that we have here. Bored out engine, stroked out, engine balance tuning, polished ports, of course, the crank, and the weight loss. So, in other words, I originally did not build this for Le Mans. I adapted it for Lamar. It was just a, a speed tune originally, so I, I repurposed it for this. If you do want to work with an SLR that you haven't done anything to, you might want to take a similar approach, but of course with the ballast you could make the weight even higher if you haven't done these weight reduction parts that I've done. And then as a payoff to that, you'll be able to have way more power probably maybe 760, maybe even close to 800 horses. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it will fall in the point level, but it might be worth looking into that because, of course, the fuel use will be a little bit different, but it's still not the best car in the world anyway for economy, just like the Veyron. Three laps is fine, and it's certainly good enough to win. And, of course, for those who don't know, I'll jump quickly into the career mode to show you the race that I'm talking about. Of course, jump over to Europe. You will need to progress through the cafe far enough to unlock Le Mans, or Circuit de la Sarte, go to the 700 point event here. Of course, it's about half a million, but then you get the bonus, so it's 825 grand. It takes half an hour. For this one, you'll see some footage when I'm actually in the event, literally just sitting there at the end of the race for like a good minute, minute and a half, because you don't need to do another lap. You know, that's just a waste of time at that point. Then as long as the cars aren't so close that they'll pass you, you can just roll across the line with plenty of time to spare and get yourself a victory. So ultimately it's about 1.6 million an hour or so, as you can see in the thumbnail, as with all of these builds on this track. I do have continually requests to do tunes for the other Cash Cow events, 
probably most notably at Spa, the one hour endurance, which doesn't pay out as well, but I know some people do like to do that one for a bit of a change. I do still need to get around to doing that. I will do so eventually, <laughs> but for now, I did say that I was going to put this one out, so I wanted to do that. And of course, if you do try out this one or any of my other cash cow builds, I've done crazy, you know, all over the place approaches. I've done the Porsche 917 for the crazy expensive end. I've done the Red Bull Junior for the super simple and easy end and pretty much everything in between at this point. So check out those if you haven't already. And of course, stick around on the channel for more. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.